The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. I am Mark Friedlander, an executive board member and immediate past chair of the Insurance Marketing and Communications Association, and welcome to the third edition of IMCA's 2016-17 Leadership Webcast Series. Today's program is Marketers and Communicators Play a Key Role in Insurance Fraud Prevention Awareness. Our presenter is Tom Donahue. Tom is the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority. Tom, who joined IFPA in 2014, has more than 20 years of vast experience in claims investigations. This includes his key role as the managing Kemper Service Group's Eastern Regional Special Investigations Unit, which he held that role prior to joining IFPA. During today's webcast, please use the questions chat box on the right side of your WebEx window to submit questions for Tom. He will respond to all of your questions uh, immediately following his presentation. Also, please note all attendees today will be in mute mode throughout the entire broadcast, but we'll, uh, we'll keep that in mute throughout the entire program today. Without further ado, please welcome Do Tom Donahue. Tom, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Um, what I'd like to do today is talk about the Pennsylvania Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority and our role in combating fraud in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'll begin with a definition of fraud. Fraud is a wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain, a false representation of a matter of fact, whether by words or by conduct, an act or course of deception, an intentional concealment, omission, or perversion of truth. What I usually say in my training, um, things in the past, is basically it's a lie. Um, insurance fraud, our statute in Pennsylvania, knowingly and with the intent to defraud any insurer or self-insured presents or causes to be presented to any insurer or self-insured any statement forming a part of or in support of a claim that contains any false, incomplete, or misleading information concerning any fact or thing material to the claim. What does fraud cost you? According to the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud, it's estimated that fraud, insurance fraud costs $90 billion a year. And with that $90 billion, that includes health care, insurance, fraud as well. And the $90 billion is not just premium, that's the cost to consumers um, for increases in trucking, consumer goods, and services as well. Fraud matters because insurance fraud needlessly adds to insurers' business cost, and that makes insurance more costly for consumers. And now is our time for a polling question number one. Uh, Tom, you might want to explain how we're going to do this uh, for the audience. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we want the them question to do a quick is, poll, and then we'll have the results. Right. Okay, so for all those uh, participating, there we go. We've already got uh, some responses. Good. Excellent. So we have uh, we're kind of split three ways. We have 33% of the responses were A, 300. 33% uh, of the responses were B, 950, and 33% of the responses C, 1,200. None for D. Well, right, I could say right I could say the 33% uh, people were correct, <laughs> and that is it cost the average family $950 each year, and that goes back to the prior slide as well. That's in consumer goods and services. Basically, premiums are affected. It's probably between $200 and $300 per year in premium. Where there's money, there's fraud. Pennsylvania is the fifth largest state insurance market, 
We have 1,670 insurers, $7.2 trillion in assets, $1 trillion surplus, and $95.6 billion in direct written premium. We have over 200,000 licensed producers and 15,000 agencies. Our anti-fraud history in Pennsylvania, in the 1980s, there were high auto insurance rates. One of the reasons for the high rates was insurance fraud. It was seen as a large loss factor. Um, sometime in the early 80s to mid-1980s is when insurance carriers started develop, developing their own special investigation units. In 1990, insurance fraud was defined in the Crimes Code, and fraud reporting was required of all auto insurers. At the time, in the 1990s, law enforcement lacked resources and expertise. There were no investigators who just were dedicated to investigating insurance fraud. In 1994, the Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority was created by the legislature. We began operations in 1995. And the important thing for me to mention is that no taxpayer dollars are used. Funding comes from annual assessments levied upon insurers. Who we are? We are a public corporation, legislatively created as a public-private partnership to combat insurance fraud in Pennsylvania. All powers are vested in a seven-member board of directors as representatives of insurers, law enforcement, and consumers. Law enforcement is represented by the Chief Deputy of the Attorney General's Office, the Insurance Fraud Section, and the other representative from law enforcement is in charge of the Federal Insurance Task Force out of Philadelphia. We also have a consumer advocate who was appointed by the governor, and the remaining representatives are from insurance carriers throughout the Commonwealth. The IFPA is empowered to levy assessments upon insurers to pay for Pennsylvania's insurance fraud prosecution and prevention programs. Our role is to evaluate Pennsylvania's insurance fraud problem. We administer $13.6 million into our fraud prevention trust fund, and with that we fund 15 state and local criminal prosecution programs. The largest is the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, who has their insurance fraud section. The second largest is the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, who also has an insurance fraud unit as well. And we also raise public fraud awareness, and we contribute between $700,000 and $1 million each year into our fraud awareness campaign. We're also responsible to report annually to the Governor and General Assembly by April 1st of each year. Fraud deterrence equals prosecutions and public awareness. As I mentioned previously, we have our criminal prosecution programs. With those, 15 state and local agencies consist of 58 investigators, 26 prosecutors, and 15 support staff, and they're all dedicated to investigate and prosecute insurance fraud only. In 2015, we had 3,227 insurance fraud complaints or referrals, 410 arrests, 387 prosecutions, and $2.4 million in fines and restitution. Okay, we're ready for question number two. Okay, real quick. What type of insurance fraud is committed most frequently in Pennsylvania? The options are A, homeowners. B, workers' comp, C, auto, D, health care. So please make your choice, and we'll have the results momentarily. Okay, results are in. We have uh, overwhelmingly auto at 75%, and then workers' comp, 25%. So, Tom, give us what the uh, the answer is. Okay, very good, everybody. The answer is auto. As you can see from our, these are ref our referrals from 2010 through 2015, and almost half of the referrals that come in are for auto. 
um, followed closely by workers' comp and homeowners. Also, our arrests from 2010 through 2015 reflect pretty closely to the referrals in that 67% of our arrests are auto fraud, um, followed again closely by homeowners and workers' comp and health insurance as well. Okay, question number three. Question number three, purchasing insurance after being involved in an accident is known as what? A, crash and buy, B, crash and call, C, hit and help, or D, tax and spend. Please make your selection now. We have an overwhelming response, uh, crash and buy at 75% and crash and call at 25%. Tom, give us more details. Okay, very good. Another uh, very good response. It is crash and buy. Um, as we can see from our arrest and auto insurance fraud, 36% are for coverage policy loss. And our number one insurance fraud in Pennsylvania is crash and buy. Basically what crash and buy is, is you're driving without insurance, you're involved in an accident, you call to purchase insurance, you tell the agent you've never been involved in any accidents, you don't have any damage to your car, and then you wait a couple days or a week or two and you call in and report a claim. Um, and that's basically crash and buy. Um, after our coverage policy losses, we have bogus damage is one of our uh, leading auto arrests and also bogus injuries as well. The other portion of the IFPA's role is public awareness. From 2008 through 2013, our statewide media campaign was entitled Tell It Like It Is. And with that, we showed common types of insurance fraud to increase people's knowledge of insurance fraud and their desire to become part of the solution. And we're ready for question number four. Okay, question number four on a quick poll. What is the typical age range for someone who commits insurance fraud in Pennsylvania? The options are A, under 18, B, 18 to 34, C, 35 to 55, or that should actually be D, not C again, but D, 55 or older. So please make your selection now. Okay, our response is we have B, 18 to 34 at 60%, and then C, 35 to 55 at 40%. Okay, great, another good job. Um, insurance fraud is committed by people who are more male than female, and nearly one half are 18 to 34 years of age. At least one third are first time offenders, and six in 10 realize no criminal gain which means that they were caught before they actually benefited from committing the crime of insurance fraud. Um, going back to the uh, age of the 18 to 34 years of age, although that is our uh, number one category, recently the 55 or older category is starting to creep up. So that's something that we're uh, keeping an eye on for the future, but that is starting to creep up recently. This is one of our television commercials that we air in Pennsylvania. Typically, we air them in the spring during the uh, NCAA basketball finals, the Final Four, and um, also in the fall as well. And we typically show them in the Philadelphia area because that's where most of our insurance fraud uh, criminals <laughs> are located. So here is an example of our television commercial. It's entitled Bad Day. And it basically covers our number one sh uh, insurance fraud, crash and buy. I can't believe this happened. Hello? Yes, I'd like to apply for auto insurance. If you're having a bad day, lying to your insurance company will just make it worse. 
No, I haven't had any accidents. People can hold. Are you sure this will work? Yeah. Just call next week and tell me about an accident. Lying about an accident is insurance fraud. It's a felony, and Pennsylvania is cracking down on those who commit it. Know the risks. Know the penalties. Our next television commercial that I'm going to show is entitled Consequences of Fraud. What we try to do here in Pennsylvania is educate people on the consequences of fraud and what happens after they commit fraud. A lot of people think nothing's going to happen to them. They're not going to get caught. They're not going to be arrested. Even if they are arrested, they figure you're just going to get off with a slight slap on the wrist. But it's important that people realize that it affects their, uh, it's, a, it's a felony in Pennsylvania. It's going to be on their permanent record. It's going to affect you when you go to apply for jobs. Um, your neighbors are going to look at you funny. Your family's going to be embarrassed. So there's a lot of consequences in committing insurance fraud. And this commercial kind of tells a little bit about it. Now, a couple of routine things before we can hire you. Background check. Uh, I should tell you there's something on my record. I got mixed up in a fake auto accident. We lied to the insurance company about being injured. It's over with now. But you were convicted? I paid a fine and got probation. Well, I'll have to pass this on to HR. Insurance fraud is a felony in Pennsylvania. Once you're convicted, it's on your record. We'll be in touch. Know the risks. Know the penalties. The slide that I want to show you now, we do research every few years to see whether or not our public awareness campaign is reaching people and we're trying to gauge their interest in insurance fraud and if the commercials are actually working. Um, as you can see, from 2008 through 2013, there was an increase um, each time we did the survey. From 2000 and roughly 14 through 15, we had an 18-month period where we went dark and we did not show any commercials or have any radio commercials. And as you can see, all of the, um, the questions decreased. And if you looked at the dotted lines, that would have been the increase we are expecting if we continue to do our public awareness campaign. This screen here, this jumped out at me when we did the, uh, the survey. And as you can see, 24% of the people surveyed think that people will get caught for committing insurance fraud. So 75% think that only a few, almost none, or not sure who's going to get caught. But it's a little bit disturbing. So our new campaign is to make people aware that you will get caught committing insurance fraud. Our new statewide media campaign from 2015 to the present is entitled See How They Lie. And it shows common types of insurance fraud to increase people's knowledge of insurance fraud and the consequences of insurance fraud. This is our landing page. It's entitled See How They Lie. And as you see at the top, it says Pennsylvania's Idiots, Liars, and Losers. As I mentioned earlier, and it was one of the poll questions, the number one age group for committing insurance fraud is 18 to 34 year olds. What we learned is that through our survey as well, that only 7% of people are interested in learning about insurance fraud. So with the 18 to 34 year old age bracket, we decided we needed to be a little bit more edgy and try to attract people to our website and also our YouTube channel as well to learn about insurance fraud. This is our new website. Um, from here has all the information regarding the IFPA, what you can do to report insurance fraud, um, insurance fraud resources. We have our videos on here. We also have our radio commercials on here. And we also have brochures that are available on here as well. OK, question number five. Okay, our quick poll question number five is, which is the preferred source of obtaining information for millennials? Four choices here once again, A, television, B, radio, 
C, social media, or D, newspapers and magazines. Please make your selection now. Okay, unanimous vote on this one, Tom. 100% social media. Very good. That's correct. I personally have three children at home that fit into that 18 to 34 millennial age group and they're constantly using social media so that's that's our new direction at the IFPA we're using social media to reach younger people um, this is an example of our Facebook page this is our YouTube page which houses all of our videos on here and this is one of our new videos that is on YouTube and also on our website. Um, this video is based on a true life story. Just some of the, uh, the names and things have been changed, but all of our videos are based on real life situations. Um, each month I get a list of all the insurance fraud arrests in Pennsylvania, as well as all of the uh, court cases that were disposed of. So. That is where we get our information to, to use for these videos. Now playing Liar Liar Car on Fire. Shameless in Somerset. Some people seem to think they're capable of time travel, that they can go to a magical place where insurance fraud investigators aren't going to notice what time you call to make an insurance claim to your insurance company, even though it was only an hour after you called to purchase your insurance. It's fairly see-through. But when your car is on fire and you're not adequately insured, well, time to get shameless. For Bryson of Somerset, the clock was ticking, so he tried to turn it back. With police and emergency responders already attending to his Ford Flambe, he called his insurance company to get comprehensive coverage for his car, then called back one hour later to report that his car had been damaged by fire. When insurance investigators reviewed the recording of Bryson's initial call, they could hear the emergency responders in the background who were putting out the fire. Yeah, Bryson, we say you're pretty well cooked. Charged with insurance fraud. Know the risk. Know the penalty. That commercial was actually taken from a true story in Philadelphia. Um, it didn't involve a car fire. It involved a traffic accident. And the Philadelphia District Attorney's Insurance Fraud Unit investigated. They actually gave me a copy of the phone call that was placed to the insurance company to purchase insurance. And at the time, the copy of the phone call, you can hear the police officer giving the woman the police report number so she could obtain a copy of the police report. So that's where that commercial came from. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, the, uh, the title of that was Shameless in Somerset. What we're doing is each one of our videos or radio commercials, we try to pick a particular town or county in Pennsylvania. And um, one of our other videos is Greedy in Gettysburg. The other one is Desperate in Doylestown. So we're trying to use different towns to get our messages across throughout the state. This year, for the first time, we sponsored baseball games with radio advertisements for the Philadelphia Phillies and Pittsburgh Pirates. And this is an example of one of our radio commercials. One of the dumbest things about trying to commit insurance fraud is thinking that no one has ever tried your sleazy little scheme before. Nancy of Norristown, PA, came home to find she'd been burglarized. But Nancy made a bad event worse when she decided to try to turn it into a free shopping spree for things she'd never owned in the first place, paid for by her insurance company. Nancy's boyfriend wanted a bigger TV. 65 inch screen, baby! <laughs> so Nancy claimed that's what was stolen. Problem was, the police report and photos show no TV that large could have fit into her home entertainment center. Now, instead of a free electronics upgrade, Nancy's been booted off her homeowner's policy and charged with a felony, insurance fraud. Know the risks, know the penalties. 
message to consumers from the Pennsylvania Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority. For more real-life, real foolish insurance fraud schemes, visit SeeHowTheyLie.com. With our baseball package, we aired one of our 60-second commercials during the second inning of each game, and also a commercial was aired prior to the game during the pregame show. In addition, our videos were played prior to the game on Fanavision in the Philadelphia Phillies ballpark and on the Jumbotron in the Pittsburgh Pirates ballpark as well. Our other campaign is entitled Don't Be a Butt. Um, using animation, humor, and wordplay in videos, we try to attract and grow an audience of younger auto insurance users. When we started this, it was geared towards 18 to 34 year olds, which is our prime target. But we came to realize that we were actually attracting younger people between 14 and 17, which turns out to be okay because in Pennsylvania, the driving age is 16. So we're trying to hit some of these um, young adults before they become drivers to learn about insurance fraud. With the uh, millennials, as I mentioned earlier, we like to be a little bit risky and, and a little bit more edgier. This is animation. Um, the kids are into animation. So this is one of our animated insurance fraud videos. Whoop, excuse me. So that basically was an animated version of a staged accident starring Wheezy the Weasel. Um, Wheezy is our, we have a mascot of Wheezy the Weasel as well, which we'll be using. I'll get to that in a few slides. But we also have billboards throughout the Harrisburg and Central PA area. Uh, we've been using them now for almost a year. What we're trying to do with this Don't Be a Butt campaign is we started it in the Harrisburg Central PA area because it's cheaper. And we're kind of experimenting to see what works. And once we decide if something works, then we're going to roll it out to the larger markets of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Um, we plan to roll out some billboards in the Philadelphia market by the end of this year or early 2017. Currently, we air our videos at Harrisburg International Airport at the baggage claim area. There's a picture of our mascot, Weezer the Weasel, who does live events. This was Motorama up in the Harrisburg area. This year, we sponsored Fireworks Night at the Harrisburg Senators AA baseball team. Um, the Harrisburg Senators are an affiliate of the Washington Nationals. We're changing a little bit in direction with this campaign um, recently. We're doing, we're, we're, we're straying away from the don't be a butt and we're headed more towards only weasels commit insurance fraud. We want to try to bring Weasley the Weasel out to the front and uh, make him or her more popular and, and more famous than the don't be a butt slogan. So what we're doing now is focusing on weasels and only weasels commit insurance fraud. And what we're doing to attract the younger kids is we just created this comic book that's being handed out at our live events. This year with the Harrisburg Senators, we sponsored strikeouts at the home games. So basically what would happen was if a Harrisburg Senator pitcher struck out an opposing player, the video that I'm about to show would be on the big Fanavision or Jumbotron. And the PA announcer would say, this strikeout brought to you by the Pennsylvania Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority. And this is what it looks like on the Jumbotron.
And then what I'm going to show you next, this would be on the side banner boards next to the, uh, the Jumbotron. And basically it just says strikeout insurance fraud. So this would all be playing at the same time while the public announcer is saying strikeout insurance fraud. Website and social outreach. We use Twitter. We put memes on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we have our YouTube page. And we're developing a new website that should be uh, launching hopefully by the end of this year. And we're ready for question number six. Okay, quick poll question number six is, when it comes to insurance fraud, the main purpose of consistent marketing is for what purpose? A, consumer education, B, increased knowledge of fraud, C, awareness of the consequences, or D, all of the above. Please make your selection now. Okay, well, once again, we have a unanimous vote here. Uh, it is 100% uh, for D, all of the above. That's correct. Thank you, Mark. We do have a smart audience out there. Very impressed. Um, yeah, we, uh, the main purpose of our marketing is to increase knowledge of fraud, mostly, and consumer education. And as I mentioned earlier, for me, since I've been in the role for the last two years, my main goal is to increase the awareness of the consequences about that it's a felony in Pennsylvania and that it's going to affect your permanent record. This is one of our largest insurance fraud arrests, and this was back in 2014. But the case is still ongoing. The trial um, just finished up in September. But I'll give you a few details. Um, 41 people were charged in a multi-million dollar fraud scam in Philadelphia. In May of 2014, the district attorney charged body shop owner Ron Galati and his co-conspirators for a nearly $5 million insurance fraud scheme. These charges were the result of a 16-month grand jury investigation of American Collision and Auto Center located at 1930 South 20th Street in Philadelphia. Ron Galati is a reputed mobster. Um, what he would do is he would allege fake accidents with deer. He would stage collisions, intentional vandalism, and enhancement of damage to vehicles. Inside American Collision, there was deer blood, hair, and carcasses were stored in the back of the shop. Also, weeds were collected from the riverbanks and were also stored, and all of these items were used as props in photos to support fraudulent damage to vehicles. Bogus accident reports and inflated estimates by adjusters. There was a Philadelphia police officer who was arrested as part of this scam, as well as a uh, insurance fraud adjuster as well. The city of Philadelphia, as you can see in the picture, there's a Philadelphia police car. The city of Philadelphia's contract was fraudulently obtained. Reputed mob associate Ron Galati pled no contest in attempted murder and insurance fraud cases. He's currently serving time in federal prison for attempted murder on his daughter's fiance. That happened a couple years ago. He just recently in September pled guilty to the insurance fraud case and attempted murder. The attempted murder in this case was another body shop owner was testifying against him during the grand jury. So the attempted murder was against the body shop owner. He's, he's, uh, he's going to be sentenced on December 9th of this year, so I'm looking forward to see what that is. These are our insurance fraud grantees throughout the state. As I mentioned earlier, the Attorney General's office is the largest, followed by the Philadelphia DA's office. And some of the surrounding counties in Philadelphia, such as uh, Delaware County and Bucks County, are also some of the grantees. Before I go, I wanted to play this radio commercial. It's entitled Bad Karma. That's the name I came up with. And uh, after you hear this, you'll understand why. Real life, real lies, real low. We could make this stuff up. It's insurance fraud at its worst. 
Rachel of Reading, PA, had a sleazy scheme for how she could make money exploiting a deadly disease she didn't even have. She purchased supplemental health insurance meant to cover costs for cancer treatment, then submitted false insurance claims for chemotherapy and radiation. Oh. That's low. Investigators learned that Rachel hadn't received any treatments for cancer and that the bills she presented for her alleged treatment weren't created by a doctor, but in fact by Rachel herself. Faking a life-threatening illness to get insurance payouts is insurance fraud, a felony. Rachel owes thousands of dollars in restitution, fines, and court costs and will do prison time. She also lost a few friends she had. Know the risks. Know the penalties. A message to consumers from the Pennsylvania Insurance Fraud Prevention Authority. For more real-life, real foolish insurance fraud schemes, visit SeeHowTheyLie.com. That was a true story out of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. It actually involved a husband and wife who committed this fraud. And the reason I call it bad karma is I would be afraid once I receive a settlement check that I would be diagnosed with cancer within the next week. So that's why I think it's in total bad karma. And that's all I have for today. I appreciate the time to spend with everyone. And uh, if anybody has any questions. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, actually, why don't you go back to your previous slide there. We'll get to the uh, sure. events a little bit later. Because we have a, okay. Thank you. We have, we have a bunch of questions here, actually, so we want to get through those first. Uh, several come in literally in the last two minutes. So let's start with Good. those from the audience. The first one is, Many insurer, insurers rather, are monitoring social media and internet sites for brand protection using software programs to watch for potential problems. Do you find that uh, instances of this in insurance fraud? Yeah. Tom? Um, sorry. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar with, with what that is. Could you explain that, the brand? OK, yeah, what, what it is, is, is insurers are, uh, let me try to try to get, are monitoring social media and internet sites for brand protection using specific software programs to watch for problems, i.e. they're identifying uh, perhaps you know, fraud against your brand of your organization. Uh, uh, yeah, let's play it all into insurance fraud, I guess, kind of. The word that I guess it could, but it's really, it, it's not something that we typically handle here. Um, we're more based on the uh, consumer portion of it and, you know, right. insurance consumers committing fraud. But I do know that we do use social media, the uh, investigators and also the insurance companies in investigating insurance fraud. Social right. media is huge. They use that all the time. I mean, a lot of times, like with workers' comp, they find people... Um, you know, if they're out on comp, they're playing softball, they have video on, on, face, on their Facebook page or something like that. But, yeah, it's used all the time in that regard. Right, right. And I know RSI unit does that as well. So very common throughout the industry. Uh, speaking of that, uh, why don't we dive into the next question? I think that's a good segue, Tom. Uh, one of our uh, audience members asked, give us some specific examples of fraud. You know, you, we did that poll early on and showed auto, workers' comp, and home as being the three top categories where you see fraud. Could you dive a little deeper into each of those and give us some real-life examples? Yeah, sure. Um, one example of auto fraud, I could give you a couple for auto fraud I'll start off with. Um, there's owner give-ups, which, you know, a person is leasing a vehicle or, you know, is, is making payments on a vehicle, realizes he can't afford it, he or she can't afford it. So they claim that the vehicle is stolen and they actually either hide it somewhere or ditch it. Sometimes they'll set it on fire just to receive the insurance payments so that they don't um, get hit with fines for turning their lease in too early. So that's an example of an owner give up with auto theft. Also with auto, there's staged accidents where people will stage their own accidents where you might have a car, you might have two cars that are set up with people in each car you might have one car that's the striking vehicle with the driver that'll rear-end another car with five passengers in it just so that the five passengers involved can pursue PIP claims and also um, BI claims. And then they all split the, uh, the funds that they receive through the settlement. Another auto um, example 
application fraud, rate evasion, they're um, prevalent in Pennsylvania. Rate evasion specifically, if you live in the city, you want to say that your car is garaged outside of the city and you're probably saving a few hundred dollars in um, premium each year by doing that. Um, homeowners, homeowners fraud, there's um, contents claims, you know, the basic my house was robbed, I had a 27 inch TV, but I'm claiming I had a 65 inch TV, that kind of stuff. Arsons, people set their house on fire. Um, trying to workers comp, disability claims. One of the workers comp claims that, that happened last year, it's one of my favorites, <coughs> is that a guy was working in a uh, furniture warehouse and he claimed that he slipped and fell. And what he did is he hit himself over the head with a power tool so that when he went to the hospital, he was diagnosed with a concussion. And he told that to the detectives investigating the case. So that's how we found out. So there are just a few examples of insurance fraud. Appreciate that, Tom. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Another question. You know, we have uh, a lot of marketers and communicators in the audience, so they want to dive deeper. Um, one of the other questions we just got was, who create your content? Uh, is it done in-house, or do you use outside uh, services, agencies of that nature? I use, I use two outside agencies. I use PPONS, and I also use a company called Brain Vessel, who does the animated. Um, PPONS does the videos and the TV commercials and the radio ads. And basically, we work as a team. I give them ideas based on the um, real life events that happen. And then they come up with different scenarios. And then we put them together and we come out with the, uh, with the videos and radio commercials. It's a collaborative effort. And it's actually quite fun. Good. Just wondering, uh, kind of a follow up to that, this next question I think fits well. Have you done any? testing, you know, any uh, focus group or any other type of testing of your messages? If so, uh, what kind of results do you see and uh, which type of messages seem to be most effective uh, to your target audience? Um, well, we do the uh, survey, which I mentioned earlier in the, uh, in the program. That's really the only testing, I guess, that we would do. Um, the other testing is I go to different events and, you know, I ask people, have you ever seen our commercials or heard our commercials and, and kind of base it on that. Um, so that, so that's, that's basically the only testing that we do. And I think there was a second part to that question mark, but I forget. Um, just testing and what, what messages resonate the most, you know, uh, what messages? when you do. Yeah, the, uh, the message that hits the most are when people um, are embarrassed. Like w w with the videos, we tell them, you know, when they get caught, the consequences, as I mentioned earlier, that seems to be the most resonant with people, uh, you know, about the consequences of fraud. People think they're not going to get caught. So then when they hear that it's a felony and it's going to be a, a permanent record, then th that hits home. And, and also, do you uh, track, you know, any specific metrics for your messaging? You know, you talked about how much you use social media, for example. Are you tracking this uh, in a consistent manner? We do. We, uh, we, we track our website and also our YouTube and Facebook to see how many hits and, and things like that we get. Um, Click-throughs is an example. And I know that since we started our new campaign in 2015, Everything's increased, I, I want to say, by 100, 200 percent since we started our new campaign. And, uh, you know, as you talked about in your presentation towards the end, Tom, you mentioned that you're expanding the campaign now, uh, you know, billboards being one of the new components of the campaign. So do you continually evolve the campaign? We do. Um, when I first started in 2014, we were primarily TV and radio. That was pretty much it. Now we've expanded to billboards, YouTube, social media, um, digital advertising. We do that as well. Um, SEO, search engine optimization. Um, that's another aspect of it. So we're always expanding. And the other thing, too, is that with the TV and radio in the past, it was usually in the fall or the spring, 
and that was the only time that we would, you know, have our fraud awareness campaign going. With the Phillies and the Pirates now, we pretty much cover the entire year with some type of public awareness message. So that's been helping us out a lot. Good. Good. And uh, another question just came in from one of our uh, audience members, one of our IMCA members. Uh, how are insurance carriers in Pennsylvania leveraging the information you provide? How do they use it specifically? Sure. Um, any, any of the videos are available to the insurance companies to use on their websites or to use for training. Um, we've also given our videos to the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud. So members of the Coalition Against Insurance Fraud have access to the videos. So if you're an insurance carrier that is a member of the coalition, you have access to uh, those videos to use, as well as our brochures or anything that we develop is available. And do you also get tapped in from organizations outside of the Commonwealth, other, other states? I do. Um, yeah, I know there's probably about 13 states, um, like prosecutor's offices and um, attorney general's office that are using our videos already. So. Yeah, we're, uh, Pennsylvania is like the cream of the crop with insurance fraud prevention right now. So clearly taking a leading position in the, uh, in the market. Correct. Good. Good. And uh, once again, from our marketing and communications audience, they, they always like to dive deep. Um, someone asked, could you give us some parameters around budget? What kind of budget do you have for this marketing campaign? Um, it usually runs between. Seven hundred thousand and a million dollars per year. And how how is that funded now? I know you talked about this earlier the structure of the organization. Maybe define that a little. More. Yeah, it's it's uh, provided by assessments by the insurance carriers in that right in Pennsylvania, and it's based on a uh, direct written premium. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Good. Uh, early on in your presentation, uh, Tom, you you briefly mentioned you know, you know primarily the focus here was you know auto home workers comp and some of the key categories where you see fraud, but you did also briefly mention about medical fraud. Right. How big of an issue is that in Pennsylvania? Medical fraud is big. the The issue with medical fraud is that medical fraud is primarily committed by the providers. So it's basically your doctors and dentists and, and people like that that are committing the fraud more so than an insurance consumer. So we really don't have a lot of public awareness geared towards medical fraud because basically what we're trying to do with our fraud awareness campaign is people that commit fraud usually just typically make a bad decision. They're in a, in a point where you know, their car is wrecked, they don't have a lot of money, they don't know which way to go. Our message is to try to make them not make that bad decision. With medical fraud, with the providers and attorneys and things like that involved, they're pretty much criminals to begin with that are committing the fraud, so our message is, isn't really geared towards them, if that makes sense to you. It does. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully that answers the question uh, well for that audience member. Actually, there was a quick follow-up to the uh, the budget question we talked about a couple of minutes ago. Uh, when you refer to the parameters of your annual budget, is that for running the ad, content development, or just kind of the whole package? Everything. That's the whole package. That's everything. Okay. So that, that's that's all inclusive of every every component. Ads, buy of time. You know, you name it. Right, right. It's it's ad space, buying time, uh, yep. billboard production, uh, yeah, video animation, production. video, animation. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got it. Good. Good. Well, I'm going to take one more quick look at our question box here to see if any others came in, and I think we've got them all covered. Excellent. Well, Tom, I want to thank you for your very insightful presentation today, and thanks to our audience for participating and submitting really a great uh, variety of questions, really probably more uh, engaging than uh, we've seen uh, with recent webcasts. So obviously this topic uh, clearly uh, resonates with an audience of professional marketers and communicators, and we really appreciate all the insight you gave, Tom. If you, if you don't mind, if you could go to the next slide as well uh, as we wrap up. Sure. Uh, and uh, uh, 
first of all, I want to remind our audience, uh, please keep a lookout for our post-webcast survey where we will be trying something a little new this time with the holiday season. We'll be conducting a holiday gift card drawing, and that's just for participating. Everybody who participates will be eligible for a drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card, courtesy of the Main Street America Group, so please look out for that. And speaking of the holidays, uh, we're going to be taking a break in December for our webcast series, but we'll resume the series on January 24th, 2017, with the focus, Build a Customer Centric ecosystem, and that will be a panel discussion that I'll be moderating with uh, representatives of Gray Hair Software that just recently published a new insurance ebook. And look for more details on that soon. And our registration uh, site at imcanet.com uh, events will also have information on that very soon. And also, just a quick reminder about our annual conference coming up in June 2017, the 2017 Annual Conference this year at uh, a fabulous location, the Scottsdale Resort McCormick Ranch. And registration opens December 1st, and all of our members, there will be a special rate there in December, early bird rate, so keep a look out for that as well. And one of the rem reminders I want to make is one of the really the key perks of being an IMCA member is you get to attend all of our live webcasts for free like today's program. And you also have unlimited 24-7 access to our on-demand webcast archive at imcanet.com. So remember that, great information. And even those who registered today and weren't able to make it due to holiday plans, uh, they will have the webcast uh, made available to them. So always a good perk there. And once again, thanks, everybody, for attending today's webcast. And in closing, a happy Thanksgiving and a joyous holiday season to all of you. Have a great day and a great Thanksgiving weekend. Thank you, Mark.